So the next presentation is by Kitschau Lan and Alexander Refsum Jensenius from the University of Oslo. And um, Kitschau, you will be presenting the Quaver series, a live coding environment for music performance using web technologies. Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I would like to introduce the live coding environment with the developer called uh, Quiver Series. So, basically, Quiver Series is a single-page web application that runs a domain-specific spe language for live coding. So, you you may be wondering uh, why we need another live coding language because we already. Uh, have Super Collider, we have Tidal Cycles, we have Sony Pi, we have Jupyter. So why do we need another one? Well, for us, there are two reasons. Uh, first, it's for research purpose, because uh, in our Rhythmal Center, we are uh, doing researches on human perception on rhythm, and my project uh, focuses on the uh, rhythm perception on life coding. Um, so it will be more convincing uh, that if I have uh, the full control of a uh, live coding language, so when I carry out some experiment, I can have the uh, detailed variable control. And uh, another reason is that we really want to contribute to the uh, democratization of live coding, which uh, means that we want to lower the difficulty of learning live coding, especially for um, non programmers. And as we all know, uh, Sonic Pi has done a great job uh, for that purpose. But we try to do it in, from a different uh, angle. We want to borrow a uh, familiarity of electronic instruments in our syntax design. So, what does, it, uh, what, what does that mean? Uh, I will start from a very intuitive example. So, this is a very popular synthesizer, and you can see it has a building sequencer. So what if I ask you to use text to represent this sequencer? In our design, um, we use underscore to represent this sequencer. So underscore means rest. And currently, no note will be played in this sequencer. And if you want to play some note, you just replace the underscore with the MIDI number. But now you, you may be feeling um, that it is really uh, tiring and limiting that if you are required to write so many underscores and uh, MIDI numbers every time. So we uh, make, a, make a abstraction of it and become something like this. So uh, no longer how long your uh, sequence is, we regard it as one bar. And this one bar of sequence will be equally divided by space characters into uh, different parts. So in this example, it's four parts. And we use the default time signature of 4 So this one bar will, will be divided into four uh, quarter notes. So as you might have noticed, the third part is the compound part that consists of an uh, underscore and a MIDI number. So this part will be further equally divided based on the total number of underscores and MIDI nodes. By the way, this is the um, mechanism uh, in Tidal. Uh, so we, we just follow this idea, but we write it in a different way. And we are not limiting to four or eight. Actually, you can divide one bar into any number of uh, parts. And in this sample, it's divided into five parts. And each part can be further uh, divided into smaller pieces. So once you have a sequence, the next thing you want to do is to connect it to some synthesizer. So we also use this idea of connecting uh, different functions um, in our syntax design. So we come up with our first uh, syntax prototype. So in this example, we use the keyword loop to take the sequence as the input and output uh, a trigger. And this trigger is the input of the saw two things, and the saw two things will output uh, a signal. And this signal will be the input of a low pass filter, which has the cutoff frequency of 300 and the Q value of 1. And finally, this signal will be uh, processed by the amplifier that brings the sound signal from the browser to the audio interface. So what if I want to use the uh, LFO to control the cutoff frequency of the filter? Because we, we, are, we are not using any parentheses here. 
but, but instead we use the concept called reference. So here you can see the, the mod is a reference that represent uh, LFO function. This LFO function has a frequency that synchronized uh, uh, to eighth note. So this slash with some characters means a symbol. And this LFO has the minimum value of 100 and the maximum number of uh, uh, 1000. So this is not assignment. This is just a reference. And you can also um, add reference to any um, function chains for the sake of consistency. And actually, you can use this uh, concept of reference to choose note. So you can see the note A will we, we choose from um, several MIDI numbers. And there are two zeros here. The, the number of zeros will change the probability. Um, and also, for the note B, you can select uh, random notes within a certain range. And actually, you can, as, as I said, like the, the order doesn't matter because uh, the evaluation here is lazy. So you can see you can write the, the reference before or after where you use it. And here you can even write the function in uh, different parts and then later connect it together to, con uh, to create new functions. And also here I use underscores like we, uh, as a kind of placeholder to use the default value. And so, so basically, that is the all the, the in this example uh, includes all the uh, uh, syntax elements we use for this live coding language. So as you can see, it's pretty simple. And based on that, so we have more um, functions. For example, for the trigger generator, we we'll, we not only have loop, we can also use play. So you can do um, some things in the browser. So for example, you can play a white noise. For, to help you to sleep. And you can also uh, modify the speed and you can shift the pitch of the node. And uh, we also support sample as a, a, a kind of things. So under the hood, we use uh, Firepad uh, with X editor uh, for the synchronization of a text. And we use the uh, ohm.js for the parsing and use tone.js for the sound engine. And this project is completely uh, open source, so you can find it on GitHub. So this is how the interface looks like. Uh, as you can see, when you click the run button, it will read through the whole page and, and just run the, the code and play some music. And when you make some um, changes uh, in real time, you can click update, and it will take effect on the beginning of the next bar. So um, we, in, in our uh, environment, we also support collaboration and uh, even in different places uh, of the world. Um, so we use this Firebase real-time database to support this kind of collaboration. So for example, uh, you can have some performer, um, you can have some performers and audience uh, entering the same noon. And for example, one performer can send a run uh, signal and it will change the state uh, of an entry in the Firebase uh, database. And for each client, including both performers and audience, will have a monitoring function that monitor, uh, uh, monitors this entry. So once it detects the change of the run entry, it will just run the code together. So for parsing, um, I'm going to give you an example of how I define this uh, function. So in ohm.js, it requires you to write in its own uh, domain specific language. So uh, as you can see, I define function as something with a value function name and a list of function element with a separator. So a separator is just a space. And function name, as we, uh, as we just seen, uh, it's, uh, it, for example, it can be loop. And function element can be a sub, uh, one single sub parameter. And uh, you can see uh, on the bottom, it can be a median node number or underscore. And you can be combination of numbers or uh, underscores. So it will, once you have a function, it will generate a parsing tree. 
and gives you all the elements. And the semantic uh, definition uh, is written uh, separately. So it's uh, the definition, semantic uh, definition is written in JavaScript. So once it detects the function, it will call this JavaScript, this real JavaScript function. And it will, I have some, uh, I've written all the predefined function in a function library object. So it will just call those functions and push it to a global variable array. And then I will use the reduce function to change these functions in JavaScript with, this, with the help of this reducer. This is just a recursive reducer that reads the first function and uh, execute it and take the uh, result as the input of the next uh, function. So I'm going to show this environment in the browser. Actually, we can try something different. Um, if you can enter uh, uh, this address, and the, the address is, sorry. This is the address. By the way, this is how we write comment. And you can enter this new code demo, and you don't need to know the password. And feel free to turn on the, the sound. Yeah, I see. I can hear some sound there. So I can change some parameter and update it. So you get the idea, okay? Yeah, thank you very much. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, we have some questions? Time for questions. There's one over there. Yeah, this is great. This is a lot of fun. I, I had a question. So, what are your next steps? I mean, now that you've got this down, the, the functionality, the core functionality, what are some elements you'd like to, or where would you like to take this in the future? Like features you'd like to add? Or? Um, currently, uh, I need to uh, start some. Uh, research uh, experiment based on this live coding environment. So for example, we will do some user study and we will also study how people interact with this environment. And also I'm very uh, uh, willing to um, develop some low level uh, kind of audio um, engine mm -hmm. to replace this tone jazz. Yeah. Oh, great, thanks. There's a question up there. No, okay. Yeah, very nice. I would like to come back to the question. So why do we need another live coding environment? And could you just summarize that in, in, in shortly what is really different to you? You named three or two or three at the beginning of the talk. They are Many, many others. What, what is the special thing about yours? I think the uh, key idea of this uh, life coding language is that it borrows the idea of how you're using uh, electronic instrument. So for some musicians, if you have no programming background, uh, but you have played some uh, sequence before, and you can very easy to get started to learn this live coding. And actually, it is also a functional programming language. So through so this process, you can also learn programming. Uh, final question, quick one over there. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, hello. Um, nice, a uh, nice talk. Um, I think it was. It's nice that you're looking from a different angle in terms of syntax design, but it got me wondering a little bit about. Um, so, how is the performer velocity and experience? Because you have to type a lot of numbers, right? You mostly will be using the numeric keypad in your keyboard, and compared to Sonify. I, w I, w I was just wondering if you look into how it would compare to the. Uh, sorry, I don't quite get the, the question. Can you rephrase it a little bit? Yeah, so compared to Sonic Pi, you, with, your, with Quiver Series, you get to type a lot of numbers when you're performing, right? Uh, what type, type of what? A, a lot of numbers. Yes, yes. So I was wondering how, how is the ve velocity when you're performing with your environment compared to Sonic Pi? Because Sonic Pi has a very uh, easy syn a syntax, like it's easy to uh, do live coding with it. I think compared to cover series, I would say you get to use less the numeric keypad. Keep um, well, currently uh, we haven't make, made this uh, user study. Um, but compared with Sonic Pi, uh, I think um, one main difference is that it runs in a, in a browser, and which requires no installation. And, and also for uh, performance, I think the collaboration is more uh, important. It's, it's also a very important part of it. And, and we will have more, more functions and to support um, this um, requirement. And we will do the user study to see what kind of requirement we, we will need to add. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Kinchao.